Hi, everybody. So I, I think most of you have never heard of social epidemiology. That's great. That's why, why I'm standing here <coughs> on this red carpet for the first time in my life. <laughs> the social epidemiology is a new public health approach that is um, people-centered and pragmatic and interdisciplinary. So it is interdisciplinary because it integrates epidemiological, that is medical, and sociological approaches, as well as quantitative and qualitative approaches. So it was created not on the desk, but through our 25 year experience of aid research in the field. So we used to be a molecular epidemiologist studying the genetic predisposition to cancer. But a turning point came so when we are invited to the National AIDS Research Project in 1991. Although we have no experience in AIDS research, we were young, we thought it was a great chance to expand the scope of our research. We ambitiously launched several projects uh, on potentially at-risk populations at that time, so like um, female sex workers, and for immigrants or men who have sex with men who are young. The other epidemiologists, our <coughs> interest was in the biological specimens or questionnaires collected from the people and not in the people themselves. However, it didn't take long before we realized that we have stepped into the very different field with full of challenges we have never faced. One of the biggest challenge or the difficulty to build trust. So different from the hospital setting we were used to, the people were not friendly to the researchers, sometimes even being hostile, saying that, leave us alone. So um, we are not your guinea pigs. One unforgettable episode was during the fourth year of our project. A group of sex workers came to us. Can you imagine for what? To apologize us that they were not telling truth to our questions on drug use for four years. Another challenge was the fact that risk behavior was already prevalent in some of our target groups. So um, the, a threat of epidemic appeared very imminent. So that meant that we have to put prevention as a priority of our research. So you may be surprised if I say epidemiologists are not good at prevention. In fact, for the several decades, Epidemiologists were very busy in the endless search for so-called risk factors, such as um, demographic or lifestyle or dietary or genetic factors are not. So living in the prevention in the real world as a task of someone else. However, in the, in the age research, risk behavior, risk factor is already evident. You know well, yes, unprotected sex with multiple partners and shared injection in drug use. So we decided to start a prevention project that was, however, like to sail out in the darkness. So there are many questions we, we had to find the answer. The first one is how to know the people. For example, we have to know why people engage in risky behavior in spite they have enough knowledge. So what is the values shared among them? What is their preference? What is their lifestyle? And so on. The second question is how to design or create the intervention program. We have to know what's the mechanism people make a decision. 
So how to promote the intervention program in the most effective way in the real world? The third question is how to evaluate the effect. That is how to evaluate our intervention program in the real world setting. That is very different from the academic setting. The last question is how to create supportive environment. So real world is a mix of people or organization we call second audience that are not necessarily you know, uh, supportive to the new intervention program. So we have to find how to make the second audience positive to our program. Unfortunately, uh, answers to these questions were not in the textbook we had. So we started to search the answer to these questions. That is how we started the journey to socio-epidemiology. So in one aid conference in the Europe, we came across the qualitative method that deeply explores the values or life of the people through participatory uh, observation or interviews. So we immediately understood this is a, one of the methods we are seeking, then started to use it in combination with quantitative method. Before long, we knew that a similar combinative approach was emerging in social science. So it, it has now uh, established as mixed method approach. So in order to uh, design or create the intervention program, I said we have to know the mechanism of decision making. Unfortunately, uh, there were many theories like that mostly developed in the US. We selected only some of them that are practical and fit to the Japanese cultural context from our field experiences. And those are health brief model, and stage of the change model, and so on, that assumes the interaction or processes occurring inside of us before decision making. We also, we also adopted a consumer information processing model that tells us appropriate amount of information to be delivered or the style of, the, of communication to effectively induce the behavior change. So in order to design or create the intervention program, we also have to know how to promote it in the real society. So we adopted the problem posing education model of Paolo Freire, and that is a people-centered and uh, empowering uh, approach uh, helps people to create new situations by themselves. We also adopted social marketing. So this is a commercial marketing applied to public health. As you know, the commercial marketing you know, uh, is a systematic and consumer-centered approach to encourage or even push you to buy some specific product like a cars or cellular phones or clothes. The social marketing applies these strategies to health behavior change. We found social marketing is the most powerful and practical program framework for prevention. For the uh, evaluation of the program in the real world of society, a rigorous research design like randomized control trial is really an option. So in search for the method to evaluate the effect of our program in the immigrant society, we came across the quasi-experimental design that allow the pragmatic evaluation of the program. So as I mentioned, the real world is not necessarily friendly to the program from the beginning. So we created the approach we call evidence-based advocacy. That is systematic effort to change the social climate by providing actively the evidence from our research 
or other sources to the second audience uh, from multiple channels or multiple communities. So it was at this moment we established our basic, basic pattern of our approach and we thought we need term that properly express our approach. So that was social epidemiology. It keeps in, in we coined in, in the year of 2000. It keeps evolving, incorporating new approaches like gamification or a social entrepreneurship. Social epidemiology brought us many important findings to us. In, in a previous study in Iran, among black users, we found many of them appear to have acquired HIV infection through injection drug use in, inside prison. But fortunately, uh, our finding was adopted and translated into the National Comprehensive HIV Prevention Program in prison in Iran. Our recent study in the DR Congo found that the adherence of the AIDS patients to ARP, antiretrovirus therapy, was affected by food insecurity. In other words, when the patients have no food to eat, they want what they cannot take medicine. Do you, do you know why? So it is partly because they were taught by the physician to take medicine after me. Also, they believe that the medicine may not be effective taken without food. Also, um, it is because it causes uh, st very severe stomach pain if taken when hungry. So, so our findings suggest the integration of ART program and food support program will be um, important to maximize the benefit of both programs. The project we developed incorporating or uh, in integrating the whole full spectrum of social epidemiology is the WISH project, which is a acronym well-being of youth in social happiness developed by Masako Onotihara in 2002. So this project has been proven very effective to improve the sexual health related knowledge, attitude, behaviors. So it is evolving uh, to, to adapt to the changing landscape of the young people and now expanding its scope to other adolescent problems like bullying or mental health problems. Through the uh, course of this project, we surveyed more than 350,000 students, or interviewed more than 1,000 students to keep update the program. So this project is expanding nationwide, attracting hundreds of school teachers to a training course held annually in Kyoto, and also it is receiving increasing international attention because of the book she published, especially from ASEAN countries, where, young, where the because of the globalization, economic growth, and uh, advance in the ICT technologies, young people are experiencing very rapid and profound changes in many aspects of their lifestyle, including sexual behavior. So in summary, Social epidemiology is a new public health approach of Kyoto University origin. It evolves over time, incorporating the new approaches, also adapting to the changing landscape of the people or to the different cultural context. We hope our approach will be shared with more people in and out of the country and to help to solve the problem in the real world in the society. Thank you very much.